Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, I'm starting the big list of fixes on Ellie the L Grand. When I bought my 2005 Nissan L Grand 3.5, I got a really good price, much as I did on my previous car, Blue, the XJ6 uh, limousine. And that was because I got a good car in nice condition, older, this is 2005, she's done about 65,000 miles, um, so no real mileage at all, imported from Japan, no salt, very important, and was able to do a good deal because she got some known faults that I was prepared to either live with, take on, fix. And that's a really good way to go if you want a bargain of a vehicle. So amongst her problems, one of the headlights is particularly faded. So this is UV damage, been parked with that face in the sun for way too many years and it's yellowed and hazed the headlamp. That's relatively easy to fix. I'm not going to fix that today, but it's on the list. Replacing the headlight would be quite expensive and would put a lot of people off this. The other headlight is in fine condition relative to its age, but when I've finished fixing that one up, this one will look bad. So both of those will need doing. There is a couple of little dents where somebody's pulled alongside and opened a door on it. There's a small dent here. I'm not sure how well these will show up on film. And a little wrinkle here. Same thing, something's hit it. it might be a, a trolley or something. Uh, it's not broken the paint. Hopefully I can do a little bit of pulling on that and get those out. The number plates had been changed to UK spec plates, obviously, and the mountings that had been used to hold them in place were incorrect, and one of the bolts had sheared, and another one had rusted, and this was sitting at a funny angle. Just made it look tatty. Obviously, I fixed that very, very quickly because I needed to drive the vehicle, but that was a bit of a nothing job. She has an occasional issue with this mirror in that the motor that's used to adjust it sometimes doesn't operate. Now, based on the fact that you get these in the right place and barely move them from one year to the next, really isn't an issue, but it's popped up on an MOT advisory a couple of times, which I think is a little unusual. Um, but it's on there, and again, I guess the owner thought that would put people off. So I can fix that, but equally, it's not something that's got any degree of urgency attached to it. The van has a drone when you're doing 60, 70 miles an hour. And I think that's down to wheel bearings. These are very heavy vehicles with much better handling than anybody should give them credit for. And two and a half tons, 2.2 tons, depending on the spec of your vehicle, leaning on this wheel when it's locked over and taking you around a bend quite quick can really wear the bearings. And people are put off by changing wheel bearings when they're not slot in slot out type which these aren't they're pressed so again that put people off rear wheel bearings are probably fine but I would like to change them all and there's potentially a drone coming from the prop shaft bearing center support bearing as well but I'm not sure but I want to change that just to start afresh Rear windscreen wiper blade has literally started to fall to pieces and it is a sort of styled, bespokey type thing, but they're actually easy to get hold of. She needs a new set of 
pads all round. Um, I'll examine the condition of the discs, but at the moment they look okay, but she does need pads all round. She has some suspension noise when you go over speed bumps or silent policemen, um, i.e. lots of articulation. But it sounds very much like a plastic rubbing noise. And I think that's the gaiters on the dampers rubbing. Uh, the gaiters themselves don't appear to be leaking and the ride suggests that they're in excellent condition. And then we jump inside and this vehicle is littered with 2005 electronics and gizmos and gadgets and all of them appear to work, which is amazing. But she's a Japanese car, so there are issues with compatibility. Previous owners had a lot of work done. I just want to refine it. So L Grands will have KPH uh, speedos and you legally require a miles per hour speedo in the UK. Many people address that by changing the face here to a mile per hour worked out one. This car has actually got a heads up display that's GPS guided that's been installed. I actually like that and will retain it. It just needs tidying up. The clock, which will display up here when the ignition's on and in various places here, is notorious in these things for being too clever for its own good. It's connected to the atomic clock in Japan. So whenever you reset it or reboot it, after a, a few hours, it's found out what the time is in Japan and you're back to that. There are some mods that can be done to prevent it from talking to the atomic clock. Least of my worries, if I'm absolutely honest. But yeah, it's, it's a niggle that some of you might want to consider if you're looking into a vehicle like this. Um, down here, would be normally a CD player and a mini disc player and a cassette player. Um, the previous owner has already replaced this surround with a double DIN and installed a double DIN head unit so that this can do sat nav because the sat nav is Japan only. Um, this can act as a radio. Radios in Japanese spec cars where they are domestic market only only have a certain bandwidth and in the UK that means you only get radio 2 no other channels so aftermarket radios are important for that and the vehicle is equipped with one two three screens they're all supposed to be able to receive TV but in a digital age, not just Japanese vehicles, but older vehicles generally like Blue, the XJ, they can't receive a digital input. So TV's off the cards unless you want to really go to town, and I don't. It's nice to be able to play DVDs in the back. Um, the original setup would only allow you to play Japanese region discs. So again, this has got a CD player in it. Um, but it's also a DVD player, so I can play UK discs on this screen, this screen, and that screen, should I wish to. So all great, except this is awful. <laughs> I think it's an Xtrons. It's a Chinese um, third-party um, player. The amount of RAM in it, memory in it, is so poor that it struggles to keep up with your changing volume, let alone doing two things. So it's got Bluetooth phone connectivity, the previous owners put a microphone in, all that sort of good stuff. But if the phone goes off, everything else goes haywire. The GPS is a nightmare. It's so slow and laggy and crashes. So this has got to go and be replaced with something. I use Apple products, so an Apple CarPlay based head unit. But all the hard work of linking cables, etc., getting things to work with the steering wheel controls, already done. So I'm actually in the pound seats in terms of converting this to UK spec for its interior bits and pieces. This is an irritant plus the clock. As soon as I've sorted those two, absolute dream.
If you're enjoying our channel, then don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell icon so you get notifications of new videos. And please give us a thumbs up or thumbs down and you can share the videos. And below the video is always the area where you can comment and get involved with the chat.